Hi everybody, this is Brian James from Rhino3D.com and in this video I want to show you how to model a three-strand braid in Rhino. So I'm in small objects inches if you want to use the same grid template that I am and I'm going to start with the polyline command. I have my grid snap enabled and I'll draw a two-line polyline like that, enter to complete it, enter to run polyline again, and draw another two-line polyline like that. The next step is to use the line command versus polyline because I want the both sides option that the line command has. I'll start it right here, that'll be the middle because I use the both sides option, and then I'll come up half an inch either up or down to make this third line. I'll then take all three of those and I'll rotate them 45 degrees in the front view. I'm going to click and release on the arc on the gumball so that I can just type the degree 45 and enter to rotate, rotate them 45. Then I'm going to draw one more line for this polyline and I'll use the polyline command. You could use line as well. I'll start it here. I'll come over to this point and I'll hold down the control key and click. Holding control is elevator mode so it lets me now specify the height and I'll come over to this existing corner so that I know it's exactly the same and then enter. I'll join those two together with J and enter to run the join command and these are the three selections that you need. So this is the modular element for the three stranded braid. If you did it all right it'll look like a lowercase a in the top view and it'll be this sort of half uh, bow tie shape in the uh, front view. Now you can check if you've got it right by selecting all of them and using in properties the curve piping render mesh modifier. I'm going to set my radius down to 0.35 before I even turn it on and then you need to be in a shaded mode to actually see this custom render mesh so I'll go into shaded mode and you can see this modular element. But really these are just curves so if you select it's really just curves it's not a mesh that you can click on it's a custom render mesh. And then I'll take this and I'll rotate it from this endpoint to this endpoint and then I'll hold down shift and click. Holding down shift turned on my ortho snap. I do this because it's nicer to have the entire braid that you're about to see located along one of the world axes and this is uh, just rotating it along the Y. So then I'll take this as my modular element and use the command array linear. I'll use 42 as the number that I want and this point to this point will be my reference. And there's your three-stranded braid. I like using the curve piping modifier just to get the radius right. This won't ultimately be what I want to use. You could use it, but uh, for geometry I'm, I'm going to make a sub D instead. So the first step um, in going to sub D is to join these separate lines together. So again I'll use the join command and the command line should tell you that you have three open curves now if you did everything correctly. The next step is I want to show you how to flow this braid along some other curve. So I'm going to draw a reference curve that I'll need. So I'll use polyline again and I'll go from the endpoint at the top to this endpoint where it would actually meet up and enter. Now I want you to look at the orthographic views of this line because there's three possible endpoints that you could have snapped to down here and you want this line to be perfectly straight so in the right view it should be straight with the grid and in the front view it should basically just look like a point because you're looking at it straight on. Now I want to know the length of that line that I drew my base curve and so I'll run the length command and the command line is going to tell me 51.439 and I'm just going to remember that and make a circle make a center point and then use the circumference option 
and type that value, 51.439, and enter. So the distance around, if you were walking along the circle, that circumference is 51.439, the same as the length. You don't have to do it this way, but this keeps the braid from deforming, um, being stretched out. The next step is to use the flow command. And the flow command is going to ask you the objects to flow along a curve. I'll select all of my curves over here and then I'll deselect my base curve, that straight line, by holding control and clicking it. And then I'll press enter. And then you have some options for the flow command. I'm going to use copy equals yes. And I'm also going to use stretch equals yes. This stretch option will account for any difference in circumference from the length of your base curve. So it's not entirely necessary here. But if you had some curve that you didn't have the exact same length as this line, stretch will account for that. And then you're asked for the base curve. I'll just click on the beginning of that line. And then I'm asked for the target curve. Now when I made the circle, I entered a circumference which is going to make the start and end point off along the x-axis. So it's going to be right here. And so I'll just click right here as my target. And we get the curves flowed along that circle. Now remember, the mesh that you see here is a custom render mesh. So if we turn it off in properties, we can take a look at the three curves one of them should be closed automatically. This one was the one where the endpoints were actually in line with the base curve, with that line that we drew. But you remember there were two other strands, and those actually have a little gap because they didn't meet up exactly with that straight line. So I'm going to show you using end O snaps how you can use the gumball to snap to the center of the origin and fix this real quick. So you can see we've got these two scale handles here. I'm just going to click and drag it. And because I have end O snaps on, I snap right to the middle of the gumball. I'll do the same thing in the X. And then I'm going to grab these two and do the same thing there. And now we've got a closed curve here. And you can check out the command line. When you select it, it'll say closed curve or in properties it'll tell you it's a closed curve as well right here in the type area and that's going to give us these three closed curves that we can then use multipipe on so multipipe is going to make a sub D from these and in the sub D tools you can find multipipe and you can select the three curves and enter now I already know from my render mesh modifier, the curve piping, that my radius looked pretty good at 0.35. So I'm going to use that same radius. Multipipe then wants to know if I want to cap ends. Because I don't have any open ends here, I'll just leave that off. And then for strut divisions, this is uh, either a 0 or a 1 choice. And 1 is good for straight lines and 0 for smooth curves. And these are no longer straight lines. They actually got deformed a little bit and have control points in the middle now. So I'm going to use 0 instead for smooth curves. And now we've got 1 sub D. Now it's a disjoint sub D because these are actually three separate sub Ds that are, are all considered 1 at the moment. So what I'll do is I'll select the sub D and use explode. And that'll give me three separate sub Ds. This could be useful for assigning separate materials but the reason that I want to do it right now is to show you the next step. If you want to boolean these together, we'll use the two NURBS command first. We'll select all three and enter. And I'm going to choose to delete the input objects. And let me drag down my command history here so you can see. If I didn't do that step with two NURBS, I would have 2016 NURB surfaces when I go to do a Boolean union. But doing two NURBs gave me six surfaces instead. So now when we select all three of these and go into solid tools, and these are NURBs modeling tools here, we'll use Boolean union and we'll get one poly surface that we could use for uh, any traditional modeling.
with NURB surfaces. And so you can see when I select it here, we get one closed poly surface. So you could export this out as a, a mesh, as an STL file, and you'd have one closed mesh that you could 3D print, for instance. And that's how you model a braid in Rhino 7. Thanks for watching.